Welcome back friends to the shop. So today we're gonna to be rebuilding the ram pump. We'll uh, get into it. Uh, there's only two moving parts, so it's really easy to fix. We'll take the old check valves out and kind of show you what causes it to fail, why they wear out, how they wear out. And then I've got two brand new ones here. There you go, solid brass right off of Amazon. These are about 20 bucks a piece or so. So your annual operating budget for this is gonna be about two of these. Actually, I have one in, I've got a video on it on how to replace the pins on there. It is a stop gap in an emergency. You can, you can kind of rebuild them, but they don't work very good. It's for the money, you're best off just to replace them. So let's look at the old one, start taking it apart. We don't need to take everything completely apart. Speaking of taking apart, I got taken apart by all the scientific community out there for saying that there's no such thing as a free energy. There's free energy. I understand that. However, what about the sun? Isn't heat energy? And I haven't paid any bills to the sun, so there is apparently free energy. Let's get started. If you're just joining us and you're wondering what it is you're looking at here, this is a RAM pump. This is a very, very old hundred, a pump designed by some smarty uh, three or 400 years ago that is, gives you the ability to move and lift water uh, with no um, electricity, uh, just with two moving parts. And that is, these are, the parts are the check valves. We've got one right here and one right here. This is the waste valve, and this is, I uh, forget what this is, what this is called, but there's nothing to it. It's just these two pieces right here. I know it's confusing. Um, a lot of folks ask me to explain it. I will explain it when we hook it up. It'll make it much clearer. We have a, just a, basically an air chamber here, which could be anything. I've got, it had an old gauge on there. You don't need that, and then a, a shutoff valve. And then, of course, a union right here for connecting it. So let's, let's spin this off um, and see what a check valve looks like after it's been clicking a few million times. A couple of you guys commented on maybe we should be using galvanized uh, pipe so that it doesn't corrode like this. It doesn't seem to make any difference. Th this stuff was all galvanized. And, uh, oh, that air chamber is hitting the light. Uh, it just is not, it's made in China. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that you can even buy good quality galvanized pipe anymore that isn't made in China. And, oh, no. Did that just happen? Well, beings that, so we just tore the, that's a powerful wrench there. Uh, oh, it's just cracked the check valve. That's okay, we need to replace that anyway. That saves me a lot of trouble. It was obviously not the best idea to leave the ram pump out in the elements. What happened is I forgot about it and then the water level raised and when I went down there to, or I looked at it, it was underwater and I didn't want to go scuba for it. So um, I need to get a bigger one of these wrenches for this huge stuff. It's just not quite up to snuff there. Let's see if we can get it off with the old snappy Tom channel locks here. Oh yeah, no problem. Well, we set it too deep in the vise there, didn't we? Okay, we'll mark this one. Uh, let's put a scratch in it there. This was the uh, one on the bottom, so we can see which one got the most wear. You guys are killing me with the pronunciation of these of these German knipex or nipex. When I was saying nipex, then I got all the comments saying no, it's knipex, and so then I called it knipex, and then everyone piled on no, it's the K is silent. So um, what are we going to call it? Oh, that's tight. That is tight. Behold the strength of the man. As I mentioned, this is a check valve. If you don't know what that is, all, all a check valve is, is it, it's a, did that come off? I, I think those spin off there, yeah. A check valve is a, uh, it's just a one-way valve. It, it will allow uh, water or it could be fluid or oil or anything to go one direction but not the other. Uh, some places that you would use something like that would be, imagine that you have a well that's deep. Let's say it's a thousand feet deep right? And you've got a well pump uh, that turns on, it takes tremendous energy to lift that water all the way up to the top where it comes out at your garden spigot, right? Or your yard hydrant. So a check valve will be installed stalled in that in the bottom of that system down there so that as soon as the pump shuts off, the water just doesn't drain down that full thousand feet uh, down into the well and then the re restart the cycle over and over and over again. Next time the pump turns on, you know that when that it turns off, that check valve will stop that water, seal it from going back down, and the next time you need to cycle it, it only needs to lift just a little bit. So that's you know one example of what it, where you would use a check valve. This bit here 
Is that metric? Good grief. Nine millimeter, of course. Probably a wrench I've never used in my life. Okay, so this pin here is uh, is just doesn't do anything, but is a well, it's basically the linch pin or the hinge pin, I believe, for the check valve deal. And if we open this up here, we should you can see in there now. See that see that uh, floppy valve right there. It goes in there, so the water can go through this way, uh, but not this way. If the water were tried to go back this way. It, it'll fail, or it will, it'll just stop, it won't go anywhere. So we should be able to, I don't know if that pin will come out of there or not. Do you see that in there? This is one, I believe this is one that I repaired, and what may have happened, there it is, no, it came out. This might be a better angle for you. So what happens here is that this thing, of course, every second or so, on a ram pump is gonna be moved, opening and closing. It's gonna be moving back and forth. And this being soft material brass, it's gonna wear relatively quickly. Now the, the water will offer a little fair amount of lubrication, it's better than dry, but this thing, I mean, who can, who can, calc who can do the math? Let's say that this clicks every second. Uh, what's, how many times is this thing moving over a course of a year? You know, it's a lot uh, with pressure under it. So they will wear out. Now I, one thing that kind of, what I've always thought, what appealed to me, or what the thing that doesn't appeal to me is that you know, being able to move water and pump water up for our irrigation, let's say in a grid down type of environment, right? Um, this would be a, a weak link, right? Because you can't, how could you replace these? So that's why I kind of wanted to experiment a little bit with rebuilding them. And you know, of course, you know, anything could be fixed and repaired, but um, it might be a better idea just to have a dozen of these or so on hand and turn the thing off when you're not using it so it's just not running all the time. But uh, that's kind of how that works and they could be fixed, but uh, we're gonna put a new one on. I don't see any need to take this apart any further than we need to. We'll just clean up these threads so we get a good seal. It's important to have a good seal and then we'll install the first check valve. Clean the threads up here for the next one. Boy, that camera is beautiful, isn't it? I am so impressed with it. You know, I, re I resisted buying this Canon, or the camera that I'm filming with is gonna be my new A camera, is the new Canon EOS R. I resisted buying that because I subscribed to a bunch of the camera channels, because I, you know, I, I, this is the tool of my trade, right? This is what I, I use this camera every day. It's, it's my main tool. Um, and so I resisted it because they, they just bagged on it. They taught, you know, every review was disappointed in how terrible it was. And so I resisted like, okay, well, I mean, I love Canon. There's nothing more usable. There's nothing with better autofocus, but, um, if it's that bad, then, then I'll, you know, I'll wait for the pro model, right? This is kind of a prosumer model. And, um, finally I got so fed up with the 5D4 um, by because the autofocus, I, I wasn't it just wasn't working very good. It never has really been all that great. Um, and and I'm not having a, a tilty flippy screen is really a bummer. So because you, you can't see what's going on and you ruin a lot of shots. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna try it. My, I have a good relationship with the camera store in Portland, and I called them. They said just use it for. 24 hours and or, or you can use it for two weeks and if you don't like it you can return it um, I went to pick it up and even the guy that was helping me you know he didn't like it either he was you know going on about how it's bad it was and all that good grief I got home this is the best camera I've ever used and I've been using can cameras what I would call professionally for you know close to eight years and professionally meaning I make a living with it and I use it every day so uh, call it call it what it is. I, I've been around the block a few times with cameras. So this this one here, so water's gonna be going this direction, right? So this valve will need to go, uh, let's see, it'll need to go this way and push back. Yeah, so in line. And so I got, I got it home, got it all set up the way I like it and all that. Back you up a little bit. And uh, I've, I've been using it for a week now or so. And I have to say, it's the best camera I've ever used. The autofocus is amazing. The colors are beautiful. The menus are, I mean, it is a wonderful, wonderful camera. I'm, I'm, I think that these camera reviewers on YouTube, I mean, there's a whole genre, if you don't know, um, are, are I, don't, I don't think they use the cameras for a living. I think that they, well, maybe they do. I think that they, 
Anyway, I think they're a bunch of frauds and liars <laughs> because I've never seen a camera that came on the market that was so derided, so, so hated and, and so negatively reviewed uh, to the point where I didn't even consider it. I should have known better. Um, and come to find out it's the best camera, best camera for YouTube creators out there. It, where else are you gonna get a full frame camera uh, with a flippy screen with the world's best eye detect autofocus with um, um, amazingly simple menus to use uh, and the best ergonomics in the game. Uh, and then of course, rugged, the rugged nature and the durability and the f usability of it. Um, if you look, oh man, if I go any tighter, I'm gonna regret that. You saw that first one broke, right? I over rotated. Yeah, that's not gonna seal now. I think we have to put some pipe dope on that now. And this is the point when the Sony fanboys come out and they'll say, well, you, the A7R3, well, the A7R3 uh, doesn't have a tilty flippy screen. The menu, just, the menus are terrible, uh, difficult to use. Um, the ergonomics are awful. It's like, I mean, especially if you're, if, it's like pinching a little, a little thing you can't get your hands on it, um, or this A6400, X6300, or whatever that is. I mean, the geniuses at Sony, they had the screen tilt upwards, so now it's hidden behind the microphone, uh, so that's not, a, there just isn't any other option. I don't care what anyone else says. It, it's, yeah, I might be a Canon fa fanboy, and, but um, for usability, for all around, taking everything into consideration, it is, um, it is a, an awesome camera. Best camera for vlogging it was ever made, in my opinion. I feel really compelled just to keep going with this. Okay, the 4K. <laughs> oh, it's got a huge crop on the 4K. Well, who? no one's using 4K. Over 50%, you know, it's interesting, interesting fact, over 50% of the, uh, I didn't even put, what did I do? I put the Teflon. <laughs> I put more Teflon on there and I didn't put the pipe dope, which I went and got. All right, so the 4K. So yes, there's a heavy crop on the 4K, you know, 1.7, 1.8, whatever it is. I'm not using 4K. Who's using 4K? The files are too big. The, uh, um, even though I have a very fast computer, it almost has an aneurysm when I try to import the files. They're four times larger. I mean, they're just massive. No one's, no one's watching on 4K because, or not the majority of people aren't, because interesting fact, most people now uh, are watching on mobile. So 1080 is just fine in the 1080 and the color, the natural color out of the camera on the Canons um, is, is unrivaled. No, no question about it. All right, we'll put some pipe dope on there. If you really want something not to leak and you, d you don't want to go back and revisit it, you, just, you can double these guys up here. This is a, but be warned, this stuff will get everywhere. You use it once and it'll be on everything you own for the rest of your life. You can just, you can just drive by someone who's using it, and it will be on the, you know, maybe it's because I always put too much on there, and uh, it'll just jump, jump in your car and get on your shirt and on your shoes, and then you'll track it in your house. Okay, so this uh, goes in line. This is relatively low pressure, so I, we don't need to get carried away with with tight, over tightening this thing at the risk of breaking it. And this is all there is to it. I mean, this is the engine. This is the heart and soul of the whole thing are these two check valves. The waste valve on the top, which is gonna be flopping this way, closed up here, and then this one going this way with the line of the water coming in here at the union. Some of you have been asking, well, how much water will it pump and how much, how much elevation will it lift? If memory serves, don't quote me on this, but if memory serves, it, this one here did just about a gallon a minute. And we'll test it when we, get, when we get it all hooked up. Can I get one more turn on there? Ooh, I don't know. Probably should leave it well enough alone. A gallon a minute. Um, and as far as how far will it lift? Uh, I don't know. It's lifting. I'm, I'm lifting probably 70 feet or so. Uh, and it's lifted that no problem. So it's pretty amazing. The fascinating thing is for every foot of fall of water to the pump, it will lift seven. Make sure we have everything in line there. You want that, this top check valve here to be um, vertical, up and vertical with the pressure pipe. And this one here just needs to be up and down. So that looks, could probably go a touch more. 
while we're at it, let's get this union. This is a union here. So if you have something, let's say you have a long piece of line and, or pipe and you want to put something in the middle uh, without spreading it, or maybe you can't use a union. It's, it's um, a flat face coupler on both ends. That way you can lift it out. That was my original idea um, to, so, so I could take it out without changing all the, the lines. So let's see, that's going to tighten that way. We don't know if we're going to be able to get this loose. It might just be completely corroded on there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I had it right the first time. There we go. Yeah, that's all. Uh, you see there's a rubber seal in there. This should be moving free. If we take a if we take a rubber mallet, we might be able to tap this. Oh, good grief, it was already loose. This just needs cleaned up there. Nope, I'm sorry, that's not rubber. That's just a, uh, it's just a, a machine surface there. Here, let me show you. So there's your, yeah, there's your, how your union works. So this would be connected to the pipe like this right here, and you needed to take that out for the winter time, you just disconnect this thing and then you can slide it in there um, and then tighten this up here. So let's, let's clean these guys up here. And I gotta check this valve too, make sure that it doesn't need a replacing or rebuilding. Yeah, the valve seems to be functioning properly here. So we'll put a little copper anti-seize on here. And then when we take that out in the fall, it should come out. One of you guys I'm going to put in charge of reminding me to pull this thing out before the water level gets so high that I can't get to it. Finally found a use for a Fisker's axe, scraping rust. I put this old pressure gauge on here, not because it was necessary, but just kind of to show the pressures for the, when we did the original video, it quit working halfway through the season or so. So I'm, I'm not just gonna take that off of there and we'll just uh, put a plug in there. It's just not necessary. And finally, we'll finish up with, uh, this will be the outlet and this will connect to the PVC or the excuse me, the poly, the ABS, three-quarter barb, I held on with a clamp. Let's go ahead and seal up this standpipe too. This needs to be watertight. Uh, this is nothing more than a, an air chamber. I've seen guys use all sorts of things, um, and, and I don't know the science between the volume of it, uh, how important that is. I sh it'd be kind of interesting to experiment and see different sizes if you've got more lift or more volume. This was just kind of a, this was seat of the pants, seat of the pants engineering. But this, actually this ram pump here has outperformed all the other ones I've used, including uh, a commercial one that I tried for a while uh, that I put in that wouldn't lift high enough. It wouldn't lift up to um, the water tower. It doesn't. What's there? Um, it's, a, it's a double female with a, what do you call it? So it's a threaded coupler? Yeah, it's a threaded coupler. Uh-huh. Inch and a, it's inch and a quarter, yeah. same size? Yeah, same size. And so it's got a female, it's a female thread. Yeah. Well, that's probably about all we have time for today. I, a couple, I couldn't find the other half of that union, of course. I don't know where I put it. Uh, so I got to run down and get one of those. Uh, I had to go anyway to get some more diesel fuel and pipe. Uh, we got 500 foot of trench. So I was going to have Jack start doing working on the trenching, 
but it's just pouring down rain. There's no need to dig in the rain and just get muddy. So uh, we'll do that. We'll hit that next time. It's supposed to let up here pretty soon when we'll get started on it. But I appreciate you watching. Um, don't forget to click the thumbs up if you're enjoying this. Next time we will hook it up and I'll actually show you, show it, show it running. Uh, explain to you how it works. It's, uh, you're not going to want to miss it. It's, it's actually quite fascinating, provided it works, which I don't know why it won't. I've built several of these. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Now, how often do you grease your machine? Every eight hours. About every eight hours, unless? It's raining. Unless you're working in a really wet environment, like mm -hmm. maybe even dipping in water, and then uh, twice a day. Mm. So what I'm gonna have you do, when it stops raining, I'll show you, is you've got a 500 feet of trench to dig. So you'll go down there, start as close as you can to the pond, mm -hmm. where you don't get stuck, and then you're gonna make a beeline up here to the corner of mama's garden and I just walked it off it's about 500 feet so it's a it's a long trench and you're going to uh, dig 24 inches deep 24 inches deep is below the frost barrier mm -hmm. what's that mean that means that it's below where frost gets to right or, some areas like the midwest and, and got eight feet. they have huge yeah because it freezes so deep uh, here we don't have that problem because we get snow and the snow is an insulator it's because the midwest is cold it's cold middle. it's cold yeah and it's definitely cold Where, when you're digging in here, uh, that will get filled up with junk and dirt and you can't get your grease gun in there. So just go around it like that. Now try it. And you, don't, you wanna make sure you just take your finger and clean that off there because anything on there you'll push into the, into the bearing or the pin. And as you're doing this, you kind of use this as an opportunity to kind of keep an eye on things. Are there any pins or keepers or anything that just looks wrong? Do you have any hoses leaking? You just, you're covering every inch, just kind of looking at anything that might need um, seeing to. Is this an issue? Yeah, nope, it's not an issue. This is just a keeper. So this is a pin that will slide in there for this, oh, okay. this link. It just keeps it from backing out. Okay. Yeah. These guys here, because they're in the dirt, if you look in here, uh, they, they take a, a, a real beating. And you look in there and you can see that those are still dry. Mm -hmm. These guys, I'd probably put some more in. So go oh, ahead okay. and, um, and when you're doing the pins on the bucket, uh, look down there and you, you kind of want to see the grease. So these four? Yeah, all okay. those that are in the dirt. And you want to look down kind of where I'm at there and you want to you pump it until you see, you see how the grease is squeezing up here. Mm -hmm. Like that, once it squeezes up there, that's plenty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I'll tell you when you start digging is that, now look at me for a minute. Mm -hmm. So when you're digging trench for pipe, mm -hmm. the bottom's got to be very flat. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to go in there with a rake and flatten it out. So the more it's like this, the more work you have to go down there and do it. So you, it takes a lot of skill, but you need to learn when you pull your, make your poles with your machine, mm -hmm. you want to be able to pull it nice and flat. So you're going for 24 inches. So what I'd do is probably take a stick, mark 24 inches. Mm -hmm. On your bucket? On, or Yeah, and, and we'll just mark it down in your trench. Like, okay, that's where I want to be. And then figure your bucket bucket. If it's a little deeper than 24 inches, is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, just as long as it's not under. Uh, and you'll mark a spot on your bucket where it's going to be 24 inches. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that from the cab and you'll pull to that every time so you don't have to get out. Okay. Um, so just... Oh, I do have to get out. You're going to have to get out to move the machine. On a regular backhoe, if you get good at it, if you can dig without the front bucket down mm -hmm. and leave the front bucket up, you can put, pick yourself up and push yourself along. You don't have to get out. Mm. And I would recommend learning to do that because it's, every time you do a set, you're gonna have to get out and move the machine. 